Hey there, Sam. We have created our tables, and now it's time to populate the tables with dummy data for testing purposes. In programming terms, this is known as seeding. So the next time when you hear someone mention about the word seed, it simply means to load the database with dummy data. And now to seed our database, we need to create records for our models. And to be exact, random records. At this point, you might have this question in your mind. How exactly are we going to do that? And Laravel has already got an answer for us, and it's something called Factory. In short, a Factory is a class that is responsible to generate a model record for us that is typically filled with fake data. Let's dive into the code right away to see how Factory works. Laravel places all the model factories in the database folder and the factories folder. We already got some files in there. The command factory and the post factory are generated by the artisan make command in the previous video while the user factory is provided by Laravel out of the box. Let's take a look at what's happening inside the user factory. A factory is essentially a class. To get our model factory working, we just need to override a few properties and methods from the base factory class. The model property tells Laravel which model does this factory belong to. In our case here, the user factory belongs to the user model. So we just need to pass in the class name for our user model. Next, we have the definition method, which is the main method to tell Laravel how do we want to generate a model record. The definition method should return an array, and the array should be a mapping of the model's views against the value. And I might be wondering, what is this thing called Faker doing here? Well, Faker is a wonderful library that helps us to generate fake data, and it is installed by Laravel out of the box. And Laravel has loaded an instance of Faker to this Faker class property on all factories, so that we can use Faker to generate fake data anywhere in a factory. If you want to learn more about what kind of data that Faker can generate, feel free to visit its official documentation. The link is in the description. So here for the user's name field, we're using Faker to generate a random name. And for the email, again, we're using Faker to generate a unique safe email. We call the unique method just to make sure we won't collide with other users' email. And the safe email method is to make sure the email generated is not an actual email that someone else is using. Because when we're testing our app in the future, we might be sending test emails to this fake user record, and we don't actually want these emails to reach someone else out in the internet. The now function is just a helper function provided by Laravel that returns a Carbon instance, which represents the time now. And Carbon is another wonderful library used by Laravel to replace the native datetime API from PHP. A Carbon datetime instance has a lot of wonderful helper functions that really ease up the experience working with datetime in PHP. If you want to learn more about it, again, the link is in the description. And the password fields here is just a hash that translates to the string password. And for the remember token, Laravel is using the random string helper function here to generate the random string with 10 characters. And now that's it. That's the basic of a factory. Once we've created a definition method, we can start using the factory. But before we do that, we need to load a trait code has factory in our model. So if we go to our user model class, you can see that it's already using the has factory trait. If we don't load the has factory trait in the model, we won't be able to use the factory that we created for the model. And now let's try out the user factory. We mentioned about seed before, and just a quick recap, seeding is basically populating the database with data. And in Laravel, there are classes called seeders that will execute the seeding logic for us. The seeders are located inside the database directory and the seeders folder. And here we see three files. Comment seeders and post seeders are generated by the artisan make command. And the database seeder is the main file to trigger all the seedings logic in our app. And the seeder class only contains one method, the run method. And that's where we put in the main seeding logics. Laravel by default has placed a line of commented code here that calls the user factory and create 10 random user records. However, I like to put a seedings logic into their own files. Otherwise, our database seeder class will be cluttered with a thousand lines of code. Let's create a user seeder class. I'll copy and paste the post seeder class and rename it to user seeder. And in the run method, I'll just cut the commented line in the database seeder class and paste it back to the user seeder. And again, all this line is doing is to call the static factory method from the has factory trait inside the user model and create 10 records of fake user. The create method will actually create a fake user in the database, or what we call persist the data into the database, and return us a collection of users. If you don't want the data to be created inside a database, we can call the make method instead of the create method. 
The make method is very useful when we just want to create some fake user for testing purposes. But for now, we'll leave it as correct. Anyway, to run this CEDA, we'll go back to the database CEDA and call the user CEDA class. Once that's done, to trigger the CEDA, we need to go to our terminal and run php addison db seed. This addison command will call the run method on the database CEDA class. Once that's completed, we now go to our database and verify the records are actually created inside our database. And they actually are. Our users table are now populated with 10 fake users. So now our factory is working. However, there's one issue though. Every time we execute the CEDAs, it's gonna keep adding more and more records to our database. And sooner or later, our database will be flooded with fake data. And that's certainly something that we don't want to have. So what should we do then? It's actually pretty simple. We just need to truncate our table before we run the CEDAs. Let's go back to user CEDA. And before we call the correct method on factory, we will truncate the user's table. And to do that, we can use the database facade and load the user's table and call the truncate method on it. And that's it. Let's call the dbc artisan command again. Whoops, we got an error. It is just telling us that we've got a foreign key constraint on our user's table and we couldn't truncate it. To resolve this, we'll need to disable foreign key checks on MySQL. So before we truncate the table, we're going to run a SQL statement which basically disable foreign key checks. And after we've created our users, we'll enable the foreign keys check again. Let's try the artisan command again. So back to the terminal, php artisan db seed, and run it for multiple times. And now back to MySQL workbench. We're now seeing only 10 records. And that means we're no longer flooding our database, even though we kept seeding our table. Great, let's move on. Now we're gonna need to disable the foreign key checks, truncate the table, and enable the foreign key checks again for all seeders. And obviously, copying and pasting is not the way to go. So let's create a trait for that. If you have never heard of trait before, it is essentially a set of functions and properties that can be reused or shared by multiple classes. So let's go ahead and create a folder in the seeders directory and I'll call it traits. Then I'll create a new file in here and I'll call it truncate table. The syntax of a trait is very similar to a class, except that we're using the trait keyword rather than a class keyword. And in our truncate table trait, we'll define a new method called truncate, which will basically truncate the table argument that we pass into this function. So I'll copy the code from before and modify it in here. And now our trait is completed. Let's go back to user seeder and refactor our code here to use our trait method. First, we'll load our truncate table trait. And now to truncate the user's table, we simply need to call the truncate method and pass in the name of our user's table. Let's test our code. We'll run php artisan db seed again to make sure everything is working and there's no errors. And that's it. Next, let's also create a trait for enabling and disabling foreign keys check. Again, I'll create a new file and call it disable foreign keys. And in that, we'll create two new protected methods, one for disabling foreign keys and the other ones for enabling foreign keys. And copy and paste the code from before. Now that's done, let's go back to our user seeder and we'll load our disable foreign keys trait. And again, refactor our code in a run method to use our newly created trait methods. Let's test our code, run php addison db seed again and there's still no errors. That means everything is working as expected. That's great. And now it's time for us to create a seeders and factory for posts and comments. Let's start with post. We'll go to post factory and in a definition method, we'll make the title field a random word by using the word property from faker. For the body field, we'll put in an empty array as its default value. We also want to go to our post model and cast the body field as an array. The reason of doing this is because we're storing the body field as JSON data type in MySQL. By casting the body to an array, Laravel will automatically convert the body between JSON and array. So we don't need to manually call the JSON encode and JSON decode PHP functions. And now our post factory is done. Let's go to post seeder and we'll do pretty much the same thing as the user seeders. To load a trait, call the disable foreign key helper function, Truncate the table, call the factory create method, and enable the foreign keys.
Once that's done, we'll go back to database seeder and call the post seeder. Let's test our code, run PHP IDs and DB seed, and go to our database to see if our records are actually created. And we see three records in our post tables. So far, so good. And now let's go back to our code. We'll do the same for comment factory and comment seeder. In comment factory, for the definition method, again for the body, we'll put in an empty array as the default value. Now our comment table has two foreign keys, the user ID and the post ID. Populating these fields are a little bit more trickier than the other fields. We'll discuss more about them in the next video where we talked about models and relationship. For now, we'll hard code the ID to be one for both of them. Once we're done, Let's complete our command seeder. I'll copy and paste the code from post seeder and modify it to fit the comment model. And last but not least, we'll call the comment seeder in our database seeder. Let's test our code again. Oops, we got an error. And I think it's because we forgot to cast our comment body to be array. Let's do that. We'll go to the command model and add a cast property. And cast body to be array. Let's try again. And this time it works without an error. That's great. And now I want to show you one last thing before we end the lesson. We can override the default value of a field from the records generated by a factory. I'll show you what I mean. Currently all of our post has a random title generated by Faker. Let's say for example, I want to pass in my own title when I generate a post using the factory function. So back in post seeder, just before I call the correct method, we can actually call the state method to override the default value of a certain field. In our case here, I'm gonna set title to be untitled. And now all of the posts created by this factory will have a title called untitled. Let's test this and let's run PHP artisan db seed again. Go to our database, view the post table, and now we see all the posts has a title of untitled. Isn't that neat? We can also take this to the next level by delegating the state change to a function. Let's do that. So back inside post factory, I'll create a new method called untitled. And in the method body, we'll simply call the state method from the current factory instance with a similar structure as before. And now back inside post seeder, we can refactor the code by just calling our untitled function before we call the correct method. Let's run a seeder. And it works without any error. And that's how we can override a default value from the factory by calling the state method. If you don't want to call the state method, you can also pass the state array inside the correct method. And the result will be the same. All right, key takeaway for this lesson. Seeding is referred to populating a database with dummy data so that we can easily test our application with this fake data. Factory classes are used to generate fake models, so we don't need to create them from scratch. We put the main seeding logic in classes called seeders, and to trigger the seeders, we can run a PHP artisan command db seed. That's it for this lesson, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for the support.